All right. <laughs> Just check in. Good morning. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. A gracious good morning to you as we gather to celebrate God's presence in our lives and offer up our praise and goodness, as is our new tradition during this little interim time. I'm going to ask you to lower your mask, turn around, and wave to your friends so everybody knows who you are. That's in lieu of passing the peace. We're able to see who everybody is. We're glad to hear. We're glad to see Adeline, and we're also glad to see Marge Fox here in church. We're so glad. Also, I see some other people back that have been away for the summer, and we're glad to have our snowbirds back. So we're glad that you're with us. Uh, several announcements. Um, first of all, before I forget, just to remind you, uh, the candles are here for those who would like to offer up prayers of, um, of any kind. We have them before the service, and if you'd like to light one on the way out and stay in here for a few moments, you're more than welcome to do that. You'll notice the rose on the table. As you can tell, that, re that just signifies and celebrates the birth of a new child in our congregation. Uh, the proud uh, mom and dad is Shauna and Evan Stibes Baltima. Uh, they have a new son. His name is Walker Klein, and it was born on uh, October the 16th. So uh, congratulations to them. The grandparents are Libby and Jack Bisfam, Nancy Bisfam, and the great-grandparent is uh, Doris Bisfam. So we are just delighted to welcome uh, Walker into our uh, fold. Wednesdays, we will continue with the prayer service, and also on Wednesdays, we also have the yellow card out for those who would like to help uh, bring food. Um, we're giving it to Bethel right now because uh, last I checked, All Faith Food Bank is not taking food donations, but is taking monetary donations. So if you would like to give to All Faith, uh, you can do that directly, or if you'd like to give it through the church, just note, note it in your, uh, on your check what it's for. Tonight, there is no bells of joy, but there is youth group. So all of the young people, I hope that you will plan on going to youth group. Uh, joy Company meets on Wednesdays. Um, and uh, the one last thing I was going to ask uh, Carolyn, uh, uh, we're trying to get a pulse of uh, the feel from our congregation. Uh, Salvation Army has reached out to us. Uh, they need ringers for this uh, uh, season. But before we commit, we just want to make sure that we have people who feel comfortable ringing. Uh, I think it's going to be a reduced days. But if you um, are willing to ring the bells for Salvation Army, if you can either contact Carolyn or contact the office so that we can let her know, and then we can let the Salvation Army know if we'll be able to do that. Um, uh, as we gather today, I want to thank uh, Tierney and Matt for the beautiful early music, but then also our Claire Kaiser uh, bells are here today to play for us, and thank you for them. Uh, if you're interested in playing bells, there's still some spaces open. Um, you're welcome to come and join in in the fun. I believe that those are all the announcements, so if you could breathe in the goodness of Almighty God and let us begin our worship as we listen to the beautiful sounds of music.
Thank you so much. Even the trees were clapping their hands as y'all were playing outside. Thank you for the beautiful music. I invite you now to join me in our call to worship. Exalt the Almighty and worship at God's holy mountain. Look, the Lord draws near. Come into the presence of the Holy One. Let us behold the glory of our God. Let us worship God. Please join me in prayer. Holy God, you have made us in your image, and we belong to you alone. Therefore, we offer ourselves to you in service, love, and praise. Use us for the glory of your realm and the good of your people. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Our first hymn this morning is Come Sing, O Church in Joy. We'll be singing verse 1, 2, and 3. Come sing, O Church in Joy. Come join, O Church in Song. Christ the Lord has led us through the ages long. In bold accord, come celebrate the journey now and praise the Lord. Long years have come and gone and still You gonna come join me? You come over here? You know what? Yes, you do. Nope. We got a no good? All right. She said thank you, but no. No thank you. All right, well, I'm still gonna come over and say hi. I mean, I had three minutes, so why not waste it? Hey, you say hi. Good, good to see you. So we gather again and come as a community to be in praise of God's goodness in our lives. And each Sunday we pour the waters of baptism and we are invited to remember the significance that baptism has in our daily lives, our ongoing journey of faith. We will not remember, or many of us don't remember, the moment in which it occurred but we do remember our baptism. So remember your baptism and be thankful. There's nothing in all of creation that can separate us from God's love in Christ Jesus. Let us pray. Gathered as your people, we offer our concerns of our lives in the world. We pray, we pray for the world, your creation, and we ask you to nudge us to engage in acts of service to further your kingdom, to honor and care for all that you have given us. Indeed, we are created in your image and likeness after your likeness, and we 
and we give you thanks that we are the stewards of this creation. We pray, O oh God, for the government, for all those in authority, and we ask you to enable the policymakers to enact justice, transforming places of violence and conflict into places of respite and peace. We pray for those in our community who are suffering the burdens of illness, and we ask you to surround them with your healing touch. We pray for those who sense a disconnection. We pray for those who are discouraged. We pray for those in distress of any kind of pain and ask that you surround them with your peace that passes all understanding. We continue to lift up those who are experiencing the impacts of the virus, of the pandemic, and we just pray that you will continue to surround those who have to deal with such the illness, their families, their friends, the doctors, nurses, staff, all who care for them. We lift up our teachers and students and staff and administration and just ask that you bless them and keep them safe in these difficult times. We remember, holy God, those who have died and have joined the great cloud of witnesses in your kingdom, and we lift them up and continue to pray for those who grieve. So, Heavenly Creator, you inspire us to trust in things that we cannot see and to ground our faith in your promises to us. So now give us clarity of your vision and make us willing and ready to care for others. We ask this through your Son, Jesus Christ, who is our Lord's name. And we pray as he taught us to pray together, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and give us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen and amen. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. If all creatures here below praise him above ye heavenly host, praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Amen. I don't know if Adeline wants to, but if you want to, Adeline, Miss Allison is here if you want to go into children's church for a little while. You don't have to. Um, and you can take uh, your grandma, you can take Miss Ab, your grandma with you, or Miss Melissa, you can take back there. They were going to do something fun because I was back there looking at it, but it's up to you, Adeline. All right, our scripture reading, we are continuing on. We're plowing through Matthew. So I'm picking back up on the Gospel of Matthew, Matthew 22. Verses 15 through 22. Listen now as God speaks words of wisdom and truth to us. Then the Pharisees went and plotted to entrap him, and that is Jesus, in what he said. So they sent their disciples to him along with the Herodians, saying, Teacher, we know that you are sincere and teach the way of God in accordance with truth and show deference to no one. For you do not regard people with partiality. Tell us then what you think. Is it lawful to pay taxes to the emperor or not? But Jesus, aware of their malice, said, Why are you putting me to the test, you hypocrites? Show me the coin used for the tax. And they brought him a denarius. Then he said to them, Whose head is this and whose title? They answered, The emperor's. Then he said to them, Give therefore to the emperor the things that are the emperor's, and to God the things that are God's. 
This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable to you, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. As people of faith, followers of Christ, we are constantly struggling with the question posed in our scripture today, discerning what belongs to whom. The text invites us to delve deeper. What are we to do when our allegiance to our Caesars, the powers and principalities of the world, the things that we seem to uh, lift up and maybe even worship conflicts with our allegiance to Christ? What are we to do? At some level, each one of us has had to decide what we believe are the things that belong to our Caesar and the things that belong to God. We are constantly during the day making judgments. So here's a question for you to think about. What is it for you that bears God's image? What is it for you that bears God's image? It is a question of the conscious that enters our cognitive orientation. Every day we make determinations about holding fast to bumping into or crossing the line up to whom and what we give our attention, who we pay attention to, who do we give our time to, who do we follow, and really without saying it, we are really asking 
Who do we worship? We walk fine lines, negotiating the various kinds of experiences that fill our days while keeping our heads and hearts focused on what belongs to God and how we are to respond, how we are to live faithfully in the world that we live in. The question of whose image is being reflected is a deeply personal one, and it is a complicated one as well. As I was reading, one commentator wrote this that I thought was kind of interesting. He said, perhaps there is truth that we are collaborators some of the time and and servicive some of the other time, but I'll suggest that we struggle to discern what belongs to whom and how we respond a lot of the time. What are we to do when our allegiance to the modern-day Caesars, the powers, the principalities, the possibilities of the world, with the good stuff in our world, when it conflicts with our allegiance to God? What are we to do? How are we to know? Who will guide us along the way? Jesus simply says, give to the emperor the things that are the emperor's, and give to God the things that are God. The conflict between Jesus and his critics, the religious leaders, has been steadily building throughout Jesus' ministry. And now here in chapter 22, we are at a breaking point. We find Jesus only a few hours away from his betrayal, trial, and crucifixion. The religious leaders set a trap to ensnare this man, Jesus, who has caused them so much trouble and frustration and anger. They see him as a threat to their power. So the Pharisees, the principal representatives of Judaism in Matthew's day, make a very strange alliance with the Herodians, who were collaborators of the Roman occupation forces in Judea. Let me tell you, no other time would these two get together. And together they come to Jesus pretending, pretending to want his wisdom and guidance on a question that they think will finally trick him. They want to outsmart Jesus. So they put to him a question that certainly he can't wiggle out of, a question that is a no-win question a question that will validate their grievance and actions against him. Teacher, we know you have integrity and teach the way of God accurately. You are indifferent to the popular opinion and don't pander to anyone. So tell us honestly, we've come to know, is it right to pay taxes to Caesar or not? If Jesus says, yes, that taxes should be paid to Caesar, then he will look like he approves of the Roman occupation of Judea, the land that God had so graciously given to the Israelites. And if he says no, he will cast himself as a dangerously subversive rebel against Rome and could even be accused of sedition. The Pharisees hope that Jesus would support paying the taxes of Caesar so they can go after him. And the Herodians hope that they don't pay taxes so that they can go after him. So you see, they have two people here who have different conflicting opinions, and each one of them will win, they think. And then they will both have the common goal of getting Jesus. It's interesting to note that this question for them to ask Jesus in light of the fact that Jesus has never talked about the payment of taxes, nor has Jesus ever mentioned the government or taken a position about the justice of the Romans occupying Judea. They are disingenuous when they come. They are not interested in the thoughtful discussion. They don't really want to be edified. The only thing that interests them is to get rid of this Jesus who is causing everyone trouble. So you can almost see the anticipation, the glee in their eyes, the smugness in their smiles as they wait for Jesus' impossible answer. But the joy and anticipation of the moment quickly dissipates when Jesus asks to see the coin that is used to pay the tax. Now, 
Un it's interesting that they had to have the coin of the Roman Empire to pay taxes with. Jesus does not have that coin in his pocket. Only those who come seeking him out have their pockets with the coin of the idolatrous image of the emperor stamped on it on one side, and on the other side was the inscription, Tiberius Caesar Augustus and divine son of Augustus high priest. Jesus looks at them and he says to them, whose image is on the coin, my friends? To which they reply, the emperors. Well then, says Jesus, give to the emperor the things of their emperors and give to God the things that are God's. With open mouths of disbelief, they gawk at Jesus. They can think of nothing to do. And so they just simply walk away. Jesus has not directly or even indirectly answered their question. There are times that would make it so much easier if it was in black and white for us to know exactly what to do. Nor does he specify what belongs to Caesar and what belongs to God. But I contend that they knew. They knew and we know the Pharisees, the disciples, are teachers of the law. They are students of the Torah. They knew the scripture by heart. And they, of all people, would know the meaning of the words in scripture. They would know Psalm 24, 1, that says, The earth is the Lord and all that is in it, the world and those who live in it. They would have known that the creation story in Genesis 1, verse 26 reads, Human beings are created in the image of God. So when Jesus says the coin belongs to Caesar's, but you have God's image stamped on you, Jesus is saying that you belong to God. They understood. And just like that, with the snap of his fingers, Jesus changes the question from a political one to more of a worship liturgical question. Jesus really is saying to them and, and then to us and all Christians, who do you worship? Who do you honor and glory? And just like that, Jesus reminds them of the relationship with the Almighty, Yahweh, the Redeemer, the Sustainer, the one with whom they had the covenant reminding them that it is God that breathed the very breath of life into them. It is God, the creator of the world, that calls them by name, knows everything about them, loves them. It is God who blesses them with manna and honey, with lush vineyards and overflowing baskets of bread. It is God that showers them with goodness and mercy, justice and joy. It is God who desires to be in relationship with them, an intimate one. It is in the image of God that we are created. They came that day to trap Jesus. And they left that day probably sulkingly, unhappy, disappointed, maybe even more determined than ever. But Jesus answered their question. He answered what was lawful and right, including the question about paying taxes. You see, it's a matter of whom we worship. We will know, we will know what is Caesar's and what is God when we have complete devotion to God. When we serve the Lord in all that we do, in all that we are, we will know. The psalm reading for this day, which I read on Wednesday at our Wednesday prayer service, I usually try to like to read a scripture that goes along with our um, scripture for Sunday morning. It starts off with this, and maybe this is it's just what we need to hear from the psalms. It says, sing a new song, to the Lord, 
everyone on the earth sing praises to the Lord, sing praises to his name. Let us pray. Oh, gracious and almighty God, how often we come to you not really wanting to hear the answers, but just validating our positions or rationalizing what we're doing. When we know deep down inside what it is that it means to be a child of God, you do not send us away empty-handed, nor do you withhold your love from us, but rather you continue to help us walk along the path, to be embraced with your full goodness and mercy, to know what life vibrant and eternal is. And so when we have our questions, may we listen to your answer. May we read your word daily May we continue to walk humbly with you and with one another. Great is your name, almighty God, and greatly it is to be praised. Amen. I invite you now to affirm what we believe by using the affirmation of faith you'll see up on the screen. We believe in God who has given us the gift of life, and in Jesus Christ, who came to show us abundant life, and in the Holy Spirit, who opens us to receive this gift and share it in testimony with others. We believe in the kingdom of God that is here and now and is yet to come, for we believe that we are witnesses to the resurrection and are called to do justice, to love mercy, and walk humbly with our God. We believe in the strength of the church of which we are a part, in which we find fellowship and opportunities to serve. Upon these truths we do affirm our faith. Amen. Our final hymn this morning is hymn number 70, 722. Lord, speak to me that I may speak. We'll be singing verses 1, 3, and 4. Speak to me that I may speak in living echoes of your tone. As you have sought, so let me seek your erring children lost and lone. Oh, teach me, Lord, that I So here's a challenge for us. At the end of the day, as you're kind of winding down, whatever you do, as you're thinking over your day, think about this question. To whom do you belong? Do your answers line up with your words and your actions during the day? Think about to who has given you all the many blessings and the grace of this day. Sing a new song to the Lord, for God is good. Hear now our benediction. 
sisters and brothers beloved by God who has chosen you, the gospel has come to you not only in word but also in power. Go out in joy, be an example to all, of, to all, empower to love the unlovable and forgive the unforgivable in the grace-filled name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Go in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, this day and always. Blessings, my friends. Thank you.